So whatever CrossFit related goal you're looking to hit this year, I absolutely believe that you can 100% hit those goals as long as you do just one thing, be consistent. And in fact, since consistency is one of the most important determining factors on whether or not you'll hit your goals, in this video, I'm gonna be going over a simple three-step process that I've learned over the years that you can use to literally crush any goal that you have. But before we get into that, I wanna personally hear from you on what goals you're wanting to achieve this year. That can be CrossFit related or just a personal goal. Drop them in the comments, I'd love to hear it. I read every single comment. But without any further ado, let's get into the rest of this video. Hey team, what's up? I hope your year is going awesome so far and comment below and tell me how it's going. For me personally, I've just been getting over a cold so if my voice sounds a little bit wacky, just hang in there with me. However, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael Groff and if you wanna be a part of the team as well, just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and then there you go, you're a part of the team. And if you do decide to join the team, drop in the comments saying subscribe so I know you join the team but I'm not gonna waste any more time and I'm just gonna get into this simple three-step process. Okay, so the first step in the process is extremely simple, however, it is often overlooked. And that is get out a piece of paper and a pencil or the notes app on your phone and clearly define what goal you are wanting to accomplish. And like I said, a lot of people fail to do this step and instead of writing down their goals, they just have a vague idea in their head of what their goal is. But if you do not have a clear target on what your goal is, how are you gonna accomplish it? So for example, if you're wanting to learn the handstand walk, an example goal could be, in three months, I wanna be able to do a handstand walk good enough that if it comes up in a wad, I'll be able to do it easily. So let's break down the example goal a little bit. First, it has a timeline of three months, which is extremely important. The exact three Three months isn't what is important because if you're trying to learn handstand walks, the timeline for you is going to be very different than the timeline for the next person. However, what is important is that there is some sort of timeline and deadline to your goal. This is a really cool hack that you can use to achieve your goals a lot faster because there's just something about setting a deadline for your goals that helps you achieve them in a lot quicker time. The next part of that example goal is how specific it was. It didn't just say, I wanna be able to do a handstand walk. It said, I wanna be able to do a handstand walk good enough that I can do them in wads if it comes up. Now for you, if all you wanna do is just get a handstand walk and you do not care about doing it in wads, then that goal is specific enough, but just make sure you're being very specific with what the goal is that you're wanting to complete. The second step in this three-step process is to create a clear plan on how you're gonna achieve your goals. I went over this a little bit more extensively in last week's video where we went over the most important secret there is in achieving your CrossFit goals. So I'd recommend you watching that video after this one. I'll link to it in the description below, but creating a plan is literally so important because setting a goal isn't what gets you to your goal. It's the plan that gets you to your goal. But a big mistake a lot of people make is they make a plan way too big and so big that they can never stay consistent with it. A plan doesn't have to be complex, it just has to be a very simple plan. And in fact, if you wanna hear a story on how I created a plan way too big for a goal that I had a few years ago and even ended up getting injured, just be sure to watch last week's video. Here's an example of a very simple plan. If you're trying to get handstand walks like we were talking about previously, a very simple plan could be to after every single wad, just practice handstand walks for 10 minutes or so. That plan is simple and it's something that most of us can stay consistent with. In fact, that's exactly what I did when I was really wanting to get better at handstand walks. After every workout I did, I would just kick up and do a handstand walk for a few minutes and the progress I saw was huge. So the third and final step is to make sure you are tracking your progress. This is something that a ton of people do not do, yet it is very, very easy to do so. And the reason you would even wanna do this in the first place is sometimes your progress is too small for you to even notice. So if you're not actually tracking your progress, you might not even know that you're making progress when in fact you are making progress. So back to the handstand walk, for example. If you're practicing handstand walks solidly for an entire month, however you still cannot walk more than six feet, it doesn't mean that you didn't gain any progress. For example, if you'd be videoing yourself, you may have known that you would have gotten a lot better at kicking out of a handstand walk instead of just falling to the floor. So yeah, you still might not be able to walk more than six feet, but you still gained a ton of progress in that month. A few examples of tracking yourself is if you're currently trying to lose weight, start by measuring yourself. The scale isn't always a good determining factor on whether you're progressing or not. Or if you're trying to get a squat clean PR, video yourself on a daily basis. Don't just video your PRs, video yourself on your normal training days 
and you'll soon see areas that you're improving in even though you're not getting an actual PR. Another way to keep track of your progress is to keep track of your workouts in a notebook or in the app, notes app on your phone and keep track of how you felt before, during, and after your workouts. After doing this for a few months, you can look back at your early workouts and you can see huge areas that you've improved in. Okay, so before I end this video, if you're a part of the team, I have something really cool for you. I just finished my new free download called the Workout Recovery Checklist. It's an eight page checklist with practical recovery tips to help you recover better after your workouts. Also included are links to helpful videos, supplements I recommend, and recovery tools. So if you'd like to check it out, there's a link in the description to where you can pick it up. But until next time, train hard and I'll see you later.